Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 231. First one in March. I don't know if that means anything, but yay, we're in March. As always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. Uh, but we're happy to have those of you that are with us here. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to do today. It's triage. That's all we're doing today. Uh, and we have a few things to triage, so that might take up a good uh, bit of time. But if you're here and you haven't said hi already, go ahead and say hi. It's great to have Ron, Zach, Blair here. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't think there's really anything else to talk about except uh, we're working on bugs and we're doing triage. So let's go do triage, right? Yeah. Bob, ready? Triage? Let's do it. All right. Woo! Triage. Um... I guess we'll start at the top. Oh, this thing. NetFX.NET Core packages don't detect newer versions. This is a, right? Yes, so should we consider dropping .NET Redis package groups and just documenting what's needed and what's problematic? Oh, okay. We have to do something <laughs> for .NET because it's the, the new, the new.NET framework. It's the new Redis for all managed code. So we have to do something. Uh, the issue well, is that it's self, hard. Self-contained is pretty pretty popular. Uh, true. So You're right. There, You're there's. Right. I think there's a lesser need than there was in the past. You're right. The fact it's that you, not zero. But. The fact that you can build everything in to your application and not have to Redis something does have its own benefits. You're absolutely right yeah. about that. And detecting the new .NET Core is harder given the way that they chose to organize things. Um, and the Visual Studio team said they were going to come and do something, but that's not it either. Uh, well, they've kind of disappeared, I guess, to be generous. Um, but we probably need to do something. <laughs> That's not helpful, I know. I don't know what else to say. Um, I guess, why is this coming up now? Like, why do we have to do something now and not, like, we're not anywhere near releasing 4 right now, right? I, I think we should have a plan. Or start thinking about a plan. I mean, the last thing they said was, like... Something about 4.0 is not stable right now, so they're not spending time on it. Well, and that's, sorry, I, I'm not, I'm not, to be clear, I'm not complaining that the activity they, they had last year, you know, has stalled. Um, but again, I think we just need a plan for what we're going to do um, for 4.0. Well, maybe it um, is the plan needs to be go back and let them know, hey, you know, uh, the things that you would depend on this are far more stable and we're working our way down through the last few things. I mean, the big things I have that could affect anything are patching and cab spanning. Those aren't going to affect this at all. I don't know if, right. Sean, you have anything that they should be concerned about. I shouldn't be breaking any of their stuff. Yeah. So maybe it is just a matter of going back and saying, hey, guys, you know, we, we appreciate it. You start on this. That was great. And then kind of slowed on it because you was like, it's going to be a while before Wix 4 is uh, ready. But they're going to need time. If they're going to jump back in it, they need time. So maybe we do need to go back and mention to them, hey, you know, if you're going to do anything here, you probably should start thinking about doing so in the next, you know, month, two, three That is an excellent example of a plan, which is all I'm looking for. Well, it seems like we should, probably should give them a chance to come back since we were the ones that were so far out that they decided to put on the back burner and see if they're interested in coming back because they were, had made a decent amount of thought progress on this, as I understood it. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. So is it, Sean, do you want to just like bump the issue? Is that enough? They'll get mail, hopefully, right? Because they're on the issue. I mean, they would have gotten, the issue. yeah, they would have gotten Bob's message. Ah, what did Bob, oh, this is it. This is the one. Okay, <laughs> right. 
I guess I thought there was something else. This was, oh, this is a PR or no, this is a different test. Okay. That's, oh, .NET runtime. I see. Um, I mean, there are the issues. Our other issues. Yeah, that's what I thought. This one doesn't have this one doesn't have any of the. This is the burn one. There's a different one from MSI. Right. Oh, I see. Is, is that one also in the triage list today? No. Okay. All right. So maybe we need to go poke the one that they were actually on and say, "Hey guys, uh, it would be great to start thinking about this again because you know it could take them a month just to even." get this back on their schedule. Yeah. Okay. So Sean, do you want to poke them? Cause I know you were the last one talking to him about this, working through all of the ups and downs of it. I can try. All right. Let's see where that goes. So I think we could take triage off this and it's, we have to put something in, we have to do something here. So, um, this will be back. Let's see how that goes with them. All right. Port Wix standard BA files and use page to Wix 4. This is also Bob. As this was added in 3x opt in, it's not necessary in 4, but should there be an opt out? <laughs> I don't have strong opinions on this one. I don't know. You can opt out of Restart Manager in, in an MSI package, but you can't opt out of files in use generally. Right. So I kind of... But you cannot have the dialogue in there. You'll get a system dialogue. You'll get It'll something. fall back to, yeah. nor, to old school files in use. Mm -hmm. No, but can't you not have either files in use or the new files in use RM or whatever it is? Uh, technically, <clears throat> well, you can. Um, it's you know a violation of the rules, um, and you'll get an ICE error if you validate. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that if you don't have one, you will get a system dialog or a built-in Windows installer one. So, sorry, that's, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's system. <laughs> it's the same thing with error dialogues. If you omit it, it, you know, ice, ice is complained, but it doesn't mean you're not going to get error messages. You'll just get, you know, essentially the basic UI equivalent of one. I don't feel like I'm very hopeful for this being the only hope. Feel like I'm letting the republic down here. You are. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You are. You are. Ben Kenobi, telling him to go away. A grumpy old man. Um, Heading back to the cave. Yeah, all that. Uh, I don't. It was opt-in. It's not necessary. In V4, should it be opt out? I mean, it was only opt in in V3 because it added new strings, right? Yeah, and it would break things if we didn't have them. Well, it, well, uh, yes, there, there were new strings, um, and also it was new behavior. So, I mean, you know, back in the day, that was that was the rule uh, for three X. But yes, the the strings were the yeah the strings were the breaking change. I would say the behavior wasn't breaking, but it was new. So what do you think should be done, Bob? I, why do you think I brought the issue back? <laughs> I don't know. None of us care. Uh, <laughs> I, well, that, uh, yeah, that's basically it. I, I'm so you know I didn't add it, um, and Sean, you took it out when, because you removed files in use. So we're we're at a blank slate. Um, I'm I kind of 
don't care. I certainly don't care much. Um, I, you know, I would lean toward not doing it just because, you know, I, I'm, I, I hate extraneous attributes that just confuse people and, you know, don't add much value. Uh, you know, obviously this isn't going to be a problem for less than full UI. Um, we will have strings. Uh, they also won't be translated, but nothing new there. I mean, it's not like we can't make it opt out later. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> Rob can tell you, I'm very much of the mindset that, you know, some of these edge cases, I'm perfectly fine with omitting them until someone complains. And even then. And even then. Well, it's, it's, it, you know, this is a major release. You know, this is our opportunity to, to, you know, like we did with some of the really obscure switches in candle and light back in three to just not carry over some of that, that yeah. functionality that, you know, one person wanted and wanted for, you know, not great reasons. And, but sure, add a switch, no problem. Well, there's, there's, you know, cognitive overhead for these switches. And also, frankly, the opt-outs are the worst, worst because they're, you know, this would be what? Suppress files in use? Right. You know, uh, So I'm hearing no. I don't think you're hearing anybody suggest we do more. Then that's a no. Excellent. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't feel like I saved anybody from the Empire today, but, you know, that's okay. <laughs> no, uh, but you did cut off poor Pondo's arm, whatever. Yeah. I, yeah. Had a lot Wait, more fun yesterday. The, the Ponda? Ponda. I don't remember his name. Oh, well. That's not the level of detail. What kind of nerd are you? I know, I know. This appears to be a bug. Can we update the title of this thing? Um, yeah, this is the, the cubes are wrong. Right? Cubes are wrong in several ways. Um, oh, so there's dear. basically three sets of cubes. Um, Dare, this is all in Dare. I'm sorry, no, that's not true. Um, it's also the merge mod cube. Right. Uh, in 3.14, when I added support for ARM64, I went from the version of the cubes that we shipped in you know, 3.11.2 and updated them because the 3.11, the cubes that we shipped in 3.11.2 do not understand ARM64. So I updated the cubes to the then current Windows SDK that supported ARM64. Um, and everything worked great. However, in my ARM64 work, I didn't look at uh, merge modules. Um, because they're merge modules. Um, and that was the the I think this was the impetus for this, for original, ah, this original bug. Um, then if you look at the cubes from the Windows 11, or the Windows 10 SDK for Windows 11, what kind of branding is that? Um, they, I'm pretty sure they fix the merge module errors. So the ICE M um, ICEs work, um, but they have a bug that somehow got introduced um, that one of the ICEs is in the, the custom tables in the cube, but the implementation is not. So wow, that blows up. That's going to fail straight up. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. 
Um, the only option that I think gets us to where we want to go is to use the uh, the the middle set of cubes and a later merge mod cube. That doesn't thrill me much. Mm, I guess I'm not as worried about that. We're basically picking the ones that work. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't sound like we have an option. Well, well, we have some. Um, Also, to be clear, I have not tried that combination. That actually just occurred to me, well, seconds ago. Um, So I'm not sure that that's a viable route. One option is instead of that is to simply suppress the broken ice. Um, as I recall, it's ice 103. And I'm sure someone knows off the top of their head what ice 103 is. Oh, my keyboard no. gave me away. <laughs> me either, because it's... <laughs> uh, it verifies the MSI print and MSI launch app control events. Oh, that's right. That's right. The, those new, the new, the yeah, the thing the nobody uses. Dialogue, right, right. Hmm. The, why the hell did they add that in MSI five? Given all the other things they could have added, well, because it was one of the biggest things. Um, Verifies MSI print control event is only used on a dialog box with a scrollable text control. Okay. Verifies the MSI print and MSI launch event control events. What does that mean? Oh, that they're in the list of control events, that they're valid control events. Okay. Yeah. So if we... This is the one that fails, so the suggestion is to just skip them? Yeah. Always? Suppress them by default. Or could we not go back to a time when they worked and then we don't have to suppress them? Like, right? Like, right? Uh, sure. Okay. I, again, yeah. I mean, I think that's... Oh, a, I, I just want to make sure I, I understood, like... I just want to make sure I understood, because going back and having them work versus keeping them where it's broken and just skipping it, going back seems like a much better option there. I'm trying to figure out what I'm... Like, am I missing some other piece to that? Well, it would mean we're not using the current cubes. Yeah. And it would mean that, you know, we potentially we'd be stuck on that. Even if they fixed it, we you know, we'd have to... We'd have to validate that it was fixed? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> or we suppress it. And, and I'm like, uh, no. Hmm. What if we ship both? By default, we use the ones that work, but we ship the newer ones. Does that... Uh, just making everything bigger. Yeah, no. We should ship the ones that work. Yeah. And uh, adopt the newer ones whenever they work again. Was that an okay? I missed that. Um, sure. Right. It was an unenthusiastic okay. Yeah, I... I, I... I don't like mixing the version, um, but I don't care much about the merge mod cubes. Cube, so... To me, we're picking the latest that we can. We're picking the latest version that works. Go. Turns out that they're not the same. Right? 
Has there been any progress on this? I assume this takes us to the issue. Oh, okay. That doesn't help. It's the Windows Insider feedback thing that's locked behind a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, yeah. Isn't the answer always, isn't the answer just to use a Wix slip? Well, that's to avoid the merge module problem, but we can't get the latest Dar Ice Cubes either because they have a bug in them too. So yeah, I think we just say we took the latest, we took the latest cubes that worked. And yeah, that might mismatch them until they fix them. Right? Yeah. Bob really does not want to mix and match them for some reason. No, I just, I'm, I, again, I don't care about the merge mod cube. So, you know, I have to do work I don't want to do in an area I don't want to work in to make this shit work. Stuff work. Sorry. Well, there goes our PG rating. Yep. Immediately upgrade to PG-13. Another one of those. Excellent. We're trading our way towards adult territory. All right. Hey, can we get a content warning? That would be cool. I don't want to put a content warning on this, although I don't mark it for kids either. Um, all right. I, I think it's just the right way through, the best way through. Okay. Uh, all right. Now we switch over. This one I think is Sean. Dependent patch packages are not cleaned up from the package cache during uninstall. And I think Sean said he reproduced it. Oh. Yeah. He was trying to say that it works in x64, but not x86. And uh, yeah, that wasn't true. Oh, I see. Yeah, right. I was able I mean, to build it. OK. This is around patch bundles, which for up to me, I would pull. So I don't know what's going to happen with this one. This is patch bundles. OK. Well, we. I don't think we want to pull patch bundles because they fill a very particular need. Patch bundles uninstall silently and subsequently removed. Pa dependent are orphaned in the package cache during uninstall. Uh, yeah, dollars of donuts. We picked this up with a lot of those other advanced patching changes we got from Visual Studio. Um, Sean, did you look at this in V4 or just in V3? I just built a sample and reproduced in 3. I didn't look okay. at it in 4. But I fully expect it to work the same. Yeah, yeah. Just curious. Although it's possible the patch bundle doesn't un uninstall itself. Because it sees that a package is cached, so it won't uninstall itself until that's gone. <laughs> oh, interesting. What a clever fix. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that... Uh, that's interesting. So the behavior is at least better in four in that way, although it's worse. Oh, yeah, that's kind of. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I wouldn't call it better. It's <laughs> no, worse it's not. from the user's perspective. It's worse from the user's perspective because the goal is that the patch bundle does go away. Hmm. All right. Well, um, it doesn't sound like Sean's like excited to solve this in four. So do we put it in 4x? I mean, it's just going to be like, yeah, that's a bug. It should get fixed at some point. Did I read the the room correctly, Sean? Well, I mean, if you give it to me, I'll pull batch bundles. So <laughs> whatever. <laughs> well, that's going to hurt a lot of things. So I think you want to go that way. Wow, we need, we need to keep an eye on Sean's pull requests. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think that's... I. Yeah, sounds like a bug. Sounds like uh, it's not going to get tackled right now. Put it at 4x and we'll see when it comes back around. It's 6735. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Consider not sending Wix bundle installed and Wix bundle action before detected plan, respectively. 6736. Uh, I feel like this was talked about last week. No? 
Just in the comments. Yeah, just all right. All right, so Sean. Well, those are two things that are not static. So like Wix bundle installed can change between like normally you have to call detect to get any of the machine state of any of the packages or the bundle. So it's kind of weird that that one's special and we're setting it before you call detect. Do we set it based off of the fact that you have the ARP key? It's the ARP key and installed equals one and the oh, value. I see. Okay. Sure. Because you could just be after restart, I guess, and it's trying to handle that case too. Okay. And then Wix bundle action is not even like valid in that case. Like all that is before plan is the pl action that was specified on the command line. Right which the BA can completely ignore. Yep. How is Wix bundle action used generally? Well, they'll, some people could put in their detect condition, like Wix bundle action is greater than, or less than three or whatever to make it. So if we're uninstalling, it always detects as um, present or absent, if that's what they want. Mm, interesting. Well, it's also useful in the bundle UI, the actual UI. Right, because you could right, because then you can display the correct thing, or at least what the user said on the command line that they're doing. Right, you could say, "Hey, we're you know you're installing," or "Hey, you're uninstalling." Let me show the UI there. I mean, in the UI, the user hasn't decided which action to take yet, so that's not really valid either. No, well, well, but if you know that you're not installed, well, sorry, this is Wix bundle installed. Completely agree. You need detect, but of course, most UIs are going to run detect and then show the you know their their UI. But at that point, you know, if you know if you're not installed, right, or you know if you are installed, so you can say, oh, we're going to install. The, the U, sorry, the, the UI can use this to say we're going to install or we're going to upgrade. Um, you know, maintenance mode is its own thing, but even that can come in from outside. Yeah. So I mean, so these aren't perfect, right? That's the problem: is that they're not perfectly, or that they can change. The problem is that they can change, right? They can be set perfectly at the beginning, but with more information as burn goes on, they're going to change, right? That's the root problem. Yeah. I mean, you really shouldn't be using those two things. You shouldn't be using Wix bundle installed before detect. You shouldn't be using Agreed. Wix bundle action before plan. I disagree with that. If you want... Knowing the default action is useful. I mean, the BA can set their own variable if they want to do something like that. So we can move these to the bundle uh, with standard BA then? Uh, You're just saying that burn no. shouldn't set these? I mean, burn shouldn't set them until it figured out what the, val the value is. Like Wix bundle installed should be what the burn engine detected the bundle as installed or not. So I, I, I understand the perf the, to be perfectly correct, that actually, all right, maybe we should just have different ones that's not Wix bundle installed and Wix bundle action, but it's Wix bundle initial bundle installed. I don't, that's a terrible name. Um, and Wix bundle command line action. Well, so again, I, I have no concern about Wix bundle installed. I agree it should only be set after detect. And I don't think there are any consequences for it not being set during, you know, bundle initialization. Is detect um, too late for the UI, or does the UI no, really no. have to come up in? So, I'm not in. <clears throat> I'm I'm working. I don't know what I'm doing yet. Yeah, most so people typical. I think a typical UI doesn't show any UI 
except maybe a splash screen or something static until after detect. Right. Right. Detect happens really fast. This is not, you know, it, it happens quickly. So this is, sorry, this is how Wix standard BA works. There's no UI until after detect. So we can absolutely defer through it. Or if you have a splash screen, because again, it happens so quick. It doesn't have to happen BA. quickly. I mean, yes, you're right. It does, but it doesn't have to happen quickly. You can end up with a lot of things to detect, and some of them can be slower to detect. That's the one concern. And but, and that's why MSI has you know their exactly. their loading screen. Yeah, that pops which, up after a certain amount of time or whatever. Well, it pop no. the The problem is it pops up every time, and if you have a you know a very quick app search action it looks like it flickers because it switches to this new dialogue. Mm -hmm. So that, I think that's worse. Um, if you need a splash screen, put it in a splash screen. It's fine. Mm -hmm. um, then detect runs and hello, you're welcome to your bundle installer. Mm -hmm. So Wix bundle installed. I have no problem saying, yeah, yeah. Put this after detect. It should not be set during initialization. And there's no harm. Not no, knowing the condition. default. Um, well, the the sorry, the bundle condition. The, like the Wix standard BA launch condition. Okay, that happens after detect, so it's all good. I have no problem with Wix bundle installed. It should be set after detect, but again, in a typical UI, your your wizard starts after detect and ends before plan, right? It, yes. Again, with standard BA and other BAs, um, the, the go button calls plan and then calls execute. So not knowing the default action during the entire UI sequence is not great, is bad. Or the command line action. In fact, is that what you mean by default action? The, the no, action I mean from both. Well, yeah, whatever. You... By default, it's going right. to be install, right? Right. And you can take that with Wix bundle installed and say, oh, it's going to upgrade, and I can reflect that in, in right. the UI. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the overriding that with, you know, repair or whatever, it's like, well, right. okay. Already, though, it's like a repair of something that isn't installed isn't a repair. So... But an install, when you're installed, isn't an upgrade. Um, sure. Sorry, that's what you said earlier. If if it's installed, and well, it, it doesn't sorry. mean you're if, upgrading. If it's installed and you're not installed. Uh, that's impossible. In order to show in the UI that you're upgrading, you need to know what the default action is. That's a BA decision, not an engine decision. I... Sorry, I don't... What, what do you mean? You can... Like, even if you're not installed, you can uninstall. Like, the engine has no idea what the BA is going to do. There's no code in the engine anywhere to say, here's the default action. All it knows is what the action was on the command line. Right. And uh, so yeah. if you on the command line said uninstall and the bundle's not installed, and the VA wanted to display an error message, they're going to need these pieces of information to be able to do that. Uh, if, the, if they want to be able to do it declaratively, right? If you have a custom VA, you'll read the command object you get and you'll get the value out of the text. So, I mean, if the argument here is like, all right, you don't want the engine setting this, then we're just talking about pushing Wix bundle action and probably Wix bundle installed to the Wix standard BA, and we just set them at the appropriate time which Wix bundle action could be Wix bundle command line action, and Wix bundle installed is not set until the 
bundle is detected. Well, I mean, I'm fine with the engine setting Wix bundle action to the action that was given during plan. But that's useless. Yeah, that's not going to help a whole lot. And, and well, that's, in any of the UA cases, in UI cases, it's not going to help you in any of the UI cases. So I, I think the argument is that there's value in having something that's set to the command line value. So I guess what I want to do is I want to set Wix bundle installed and detect. I want to set Wix bundle action and plan. And then we can add a Wix bundle command line action that's right. set during initialization. Yeah, that. OK. And then people migrating from three will just have to realize that. Well, that that that's a separate problem. Um, I would suggest instead we should have Wix bundle default action or command line action, and then we should have Wix bundle planned action. Does it really matter? <laughs> Do we need yes. to change the yes, bundle because action? We're, we're because we're changing the behavior. In, in a way that is probably impossible or at least really, really hard to warn people about. I mean, I know we're doing that elsewhere, but it just seems... <laughs> so we would like detect that they're using Wix bundle action and say, hey, you probably shouldn't use this anymore? Well, I that's guess. A, I guess we could scan for it in Wixcop. I don't know. That would be the, I mean, that'd be it. And more likely not, it's, it's in their themes if it's a way standard BA, right? Uh, well, not yeah. in three. Is, true. Well, that's not entirely true, but. I don't know. Wix Ben. So Wix bundle action gets set later. That's the change. It still behaves the same way it did before. It just gets set later, right? Yeah, that's the same as Wix bundle installed. We're doing the same thing for both. We're setting it later. So if we change the name of Wix bundle action, we should change Wix bundle installed too. No, I, no, that. The problem with moving the, set, the setting of Wix bundle action until plan means that it's completely broken for UI cases. It's not usable by UI cases. Absolutely true. I don't care that strongly about renaming it. It's just, it, I'm anticipating, I'm, this is a stumbling block for moving from three to four. I'd rather avoid those if we can. That's all I'm saying. And I, I hear you. And my point is, by renaming Wix bundle action, then we are making a bigger stumbling block for those people that did not happen to use it in their UI. It, by keeping it Wix bundle action, it works the same as it did before. It was always set to what the plan ended up setting. And by introducing Wix command line act, and not having it set early means that the UI is going to not have it at all. And they'll have to switch if they want to use it to the Wix bundle command line action or whatever the name should be to have their UI work. And that minimizes the break part of it. I withdraw my objection and yield my time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we need to add the Wix command line bundle command line action. I think it's probably a good name Yeah. to the end of this issue. Sure. All right. Heat throws configuration error exceptions. Hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry. John, are you taking this? Oh, yeah, I'm doing it. Okay. Okay. I, I keep seeing this, but this is who opened, not who it's assigned to. It is empty over here. Um, heat throws configuration errors exception when the hash symbol is in the path name. Okay. That's nice. That's fascinating. Don't do that. All right, uh, this will go 4x unless someone really wants to go hunt down this thing. It might not even happen. I, I, yeah, I don't think it happens in 4. Oh, all right, Because we're not reading any configuration stuff anymore. 
Cool. So. So does that mean? Sorry, I don't. Uh, I don't even know what heat looks like. Heat that XE looks like in B4. It we're just not. Doesn't... We're not auto loading extensions anymore. Because that's all this. That's the only reason heat really has a config file, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it still has. I guess it's. Does it even still have one? B4 heat does not have a configuration file. Okay. It, it doesn't just means you have... have to pass in your extensions, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, all right. So this is going away. Yeah, we're not taking this. Uh, I okay. guess we could resolve as fixed as you know, probably fixed in four. <laughs> yeah. Dark theme. This is interesting. I, I wish they would be m more specific, but I assume they're talking bundles because we can't add a dark theme to Windows installer, of course. Right, right. Although I guess we could add dark, th no. Does Windows installer even have detect dark theme <laughs> features? I was gonna say there's some bitmaps. You mean bit the maps. stuff that was added in Windows, Windows 11? Five. Yeah, right. Hey, I was just, <laughs> <laughs> I was just checking. Yes. Uh, 13 years ago, through the miracle of time travel and... Yeah, I, I hadn't research. heard anything, but I also hadn't looked, and I haven't looked at how dark mode is done in 11, so I was like, oh. so. Anyway, so this would turn into a Wix standard BA thing, which would be cool. Yeah, someone should do that. Could put it in theme mutal and maybe just auto-detect it in the end. That would be kind of neat, too. Is anybody doing this in 4? So out of curiosity... Does Windows allow you switching back and forth? Like the app will switch back and forth while yeah. it's still running? Yeah. That would be hard. I think you get a Windows message and it just tells you. Oh, in like a theme mutal? You have to reload everything? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, you know. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> no, it would be, you change the theme and the whole thing like redraws. What would yeah, but like, would you have separate themes? Yeah, you'd or have to have you... separate themes, I think. Given the way colors Why? and everything are done. In which case, I don't see how we would support the switching on the fly. Because <laughs> theoretically, the two themes could be completely different. Well, they, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Well, There's a whole lot to design would, here. It would definitely take design. Generally, you're not supposed to have you know, dramatic shifts. You're just supposed to react to right. the system colors, which we already support in theme mutal. Um, the biggest thing is that you do want to switch like bitmaps. Yeah. If you have them, you want to make sure they look good. If they somehow don't look good, if they happen to not look good in um, both, which is not an easy thing to do. Anyway, I assume no one's going to be wanting to pick this up right now in four. Nope. Nope. Purely additive. Yeah, it's a cool feature request. It would be great if someone did that. But that's not right now. Unless someone could come along and add it real, I don't know, real fast like? I don't know. Go into Theme Mutal and figure out how to add dark mode and switching and all that. Yeah. Although, I mean, you probably could start even with not without switching. I don't know if I would kill the feature if you didn't add the switching. Right, like if if someone said, "Hey, I got the ability to have your you know one theme, and it will do the right thing in switching, or it will do the right thing depending on which color you're on, I'll do that." But if you switch the theme, you know, while it's running, it does not go from one to the other. I, I think we'd be like, "Great, we'll take the feature and we'll open that bug for themes." No, do not switch on the fly. I'd be like, "Yeah, okay, fine," and we probably would never bother fixing that. <laughs> we might never because that's just not a high. That doesn't happen very often. It's one of those things of, does this app do it? Not, oh yeah, you know, I regularly switch my theme in Windows. I've never heard anybody say that. Cool, anyway, it'd be cool. Not gonna get there anytime soon. Okay, dokie. Uh, I don't have much else to talk about. Is there anything other people wanna talk about? Questions, comments, things going on out there? 
This is always where I have to kind of fill the space, make sure that we wake up the chat and they can go, oh, oh yes, 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 I had a question. Jacob, by the way, great to see that you made it. Uh, I don't know if you had any questions out there. Um, Mark hasn't been here and I missed that Mark's uh, issue when I followed it. it was in draft and it then came out of draft sometimes. So anyway, that's in. So that was cool. And I think we got Ron's change to, so we detect uh, a narrower version of Visual Studios uh, when we are running our tests, which fixed the problem. That was great. Uh, things people have been doing. Um, all right. Well, we're just happy to have you here, Jacob and Zach and Blair. Um, let's see. So, um, yep. Chris Painter was asking about the V3 build with the new VS22 detection in MSI. Yep. Uh, I sent out review comments, finally. I didn't remember that GitHub doesn't actually notify anybody until you click the Start Review button, which was kind of annoying. Um, and I know he came back. I have not had a chance to look at the pull request. And then the, the, second other, time. the other thing I had was you added some preprocessor tests, but they're not actually run in CI. Yeah, yeah, I I haven't got caught up in another thing I was trying to do, but I need to. I was trying to get the tests to run as part of a solution um, because they run much faster if you do a .NET test and you say here run the run the tests that are in this solution. Our tests run much faster because it doesn't like start the .NET test process and then load the assembly and then it's like it just starts up once, does all the loading and then runs everything. It's it's way faster. The problem is that it overwrites the TRX file for each test. So you and I couldn't. I've been trying all different kinds of combinations to um, get it to not overwrite. <laughs> that TRX file, but it wasn't working. Um, so I, unfortunately I realized that my change to turn the test on is caught in that. So I'm, I gotta get that out of there and push that change up there. But yes, that's on my my list of things that go up when my next uh, push where I'm working on the, um, the the torch, the transform stuff. So I was like, yeah, I'll just catch it there. But yeah. So it when for the TRX file, it doesn't create one file with all the results. It Nope. It, it runs them and it says overriding TRX file, overriding TRX file, overriding TRX file. And you're like, well, no. And you can take the name off, but then it's like, cool, I'll give you machine name date as the name. And I was like, I want the middle ground. Take this solution, put all the things in one TRX file. Nope, does not do that. It overwrites. Well, I added the validation to make sure that the tests were run. So if you, I guess you could just validate that one file is there and we can figure that out later. That there is one file there. Okay. I see. I've just used the TRX file though to open it. I've actually used the file one time during the build to figure out exactly which test failed. Okay. So I, I was, <laughs> the speed improvement was not enough to lose that tiny little bit of, oh, well, I knew exactly which one failed. It was really frustrating. I just, <laughs> I got to that and I was like, ah, because I was so encouraged by the speed improvement. Um, anyway, I, I just put it it's down. I had to go move on to other things. It's probably where you go create a issue somewhere to get them to There fix is it. an issue open. Ah. I wasn't the first. The whole command line is really wonky when you look at the way that you define all these things. It's just, it's a, specify the directory. And then specify the file name separately, or you could specify the the path in the file name and not specify the directory, and it just behaves differently. But you can only specify one, and when you build one solution that contains many of these, it doesn't work. So it's like, ah, forget it. <laughs> uh, clearly, people don't care that much about the test infrastructure. That's what it feels like. Is that it's like, eh, it runs some tests. That's fine. <laughs> Does it report that they failed? Well, yeah, it reports that they failed. Just not which one. Okay, we're good. Thanks. <laughs> anyway, yes. So, anything else out there? Fun stuff. Boring stuff. Exciting stuff. We had some fun yesterday on my stream when we went and pushed the bounds of the MSI product version, <laughs> trying to make it behave like Semver. That was fun. I was, I was uh, surprised how far that went. 
<laughs> that was that was good times. All right, I think I filled enough space. People are quiet. I'm gonna take that as everybody's good. Uh, two weeks from now, I think is a normal kind of thing. Yeah, March 24th, we'll be back here. Uh, same time, same place. Next date, two weeks from now. Uh, we'll do all this again. We'll do triage. We'll bring up anything else that's going on. And I think that's all we got. So until two weeks from now, you guys all take it easy. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.